In this video, we're gonna learn how to make bechamel, which is our mother or lead sauce, uh, and then turn that bechamel into Mornay, which will be our smaller derivative sauce. So bechamel is a combination uh, of milk thickened with roux. So to start making our bechamel, we need to start by making uh, our roux. And we are going to make a white roux today. Uh, that roux is going to be uh, clarified butter uh, with our flour. And for white roux, what we want to do is we want to cook the raw flour taste out of our flour, but we don't want to add any color or nuttiness. We're just trying to remove that slightly off-putting uh, raw flour aroma um, without adding uh, any color so that our bechamel sauce, which is a milk-based sauce, is going to stay uh, really nice and white. So to start, we're going to uh, melt our clarified butter. Uh, I'm going to use about medium heat uh, through this process just to make sure that we don't uh, burn our butter uh, or add any uh, unwanted color or burn to our roux. All right, now that our clarified butter is melted, I'm going to go ahead and add my flour to my warm melted clarified butter and then quickly stir to incorporate so that I get a nice smooth uh, roux instead of a, a lumpy thick roux. So white roux moves very quickly, uh, maybe a minute or two. Really the way I'm gonna know that my white roux is cooked is when I smell it in the beginning and it has that smell of raw flour, once I've achieved that white roux, I'm gonna uh, smell it and it's just gonna have kind of a, a buttery uh, aroma, maybe starting to get a little bit of a toasty aroma, but we're not gonna see any color change. So it's been about a minute and our uh, roux does not have the raw flour aroma anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my roux from the heat. <clears throat> and now I'm going to add my milk into my bechamel sauce. Now we need to move uh, quickly once we add our milk. We're going to add it um, in a stream and we need to whisk very quickly. This cold milk is going to want to gelatinize that starch. Um, so if we don't whisk enough, uh, we're going to create dumplings uh, in our roux instead of incorporating that roux into our sauce. So I'm going to add my cold milk just in a stream like this and whisk to incorporate. You can see also as I'm whisking, I'm getting my whisk into all of the corners and along the bottom to make sure there are no pockets of roux that didn't get incorporated into my sauce. Now that our milk's been incorporated into our roux, we're gonna go ahead and take our sauce, put it back on our heat source over about medium heat and bring it up to a simmer. Before our sauce simmers, we need to go ahead and add our seasoning component, which is our onion piquet. So we're going to use, uh, for this quantity of bechamel, half of a small onion, one bay leaf, and one clove. So you can see that the clove has the shape almost like a thumbtack. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use that clove and prick through my bay leaf and into my onion so that all of my seasoning components are intact together in my sauce. So I'm gonna drop my onion pique into my bechamel sauce. Um, and as the sauce is coming up to a simmer, um, 
A few things are really important. Number one, heat management. I had said earlier we're gonna use medium heat, and we do wanna make sure that we're using medium heat, bringing it to a simmer, uh, and not allowing the sauce to boil. Um, when we boil milk-based sauces, uh, there's the potential that they will curdle. Um, so instead of having a really nice, smooth bechamel sauce, we'd have a grainy-looking sauce. The other thing we wanna uh, be concerned about when working with milk-based sauces, um, working with our bechamel, is that milk-based sauces have a tendency to scorch to the bottom of the pan. So the proteins in those milk stick to the bottom of the pan, um, and as they stick to the bottom of the pan, they continue to burn. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a rubber spatula, uh, and occasionally as the sauce is cooking, every uh, minute or two, give it a nice stir. We wanna make sure that we're using our spatula all the way along uh, the outside of the pan, uh, and covering the entire bottom so that we're removing uh, any of the uh, proteins that may have begun to stick to the bottom of that pan. So we're gonna let this sauce uh, simmer uh, until it thickens. Uh, it'll take between 15 and 20 minutes. Um, so we'll check back in uh, once our sauce um, has thickened. All right, uh, it's been about 20 minutes. Uh, my sauce has been simmering. I've been occasionally uh, stirring the sauce, really making sure I'm scraping the bottom so that it doesn't burn. Um, and my sauce is ready for the next step, which is to be strained. All right, so I'm gonna take my bechamel sauce and I'm gonna pour it directly into my chinois strainer. And what I'd like to do is first if you look at the bottom of the pan, you see how the bottom of my pan is nice and clean. Uh, there's no uh, burnt or stuck on uh, sauce. Um, that's because I was uh, scraping the bottom of my pan uh, as I was stirring. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the rest of this sauce that I can scrape out into my chinois here. Okay. And then I'm gonna use my rubber spatula just to strain the sauce through my chinois. So you can see I'm just scraping down the sides of my chinois with my spatula, kind of pressing on that onion uh, PK just to get as much of that sauce out as I can. So that's my strained sauce. <clears throat> uh, the only difference uh, with bechamel uh, than some of my other uh, mother or lead sauces is I'm still not going to season with salt and pepper, but generally I am going to season with just a little bit of nutmeg. Um, and when I say just a little bit, this here uh, is about a quart of sauce, and I want you to see just the very little bit of nutmeg that I'm putting in. So if you can see just this tiny little speck of nutmeg, sprinkled over the top. Uh, I always say, if you can taste that there's nutmeg in it, you added too much nutmeg. Um, nutmeg is really a classic uh, seasoning for bechamel sauce. It really helps bring out the, the flavor of that milk and of that bechamel sauce. So just the tiniest little bit will suffice. So I have my completed uh, bechamel sauce. Uh, it is unseasoned uh, because it is a uh, mother or leading sauce. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn the bechamel sauce into one of the most common uh, derivative or small sauces uh, known as Mornay sauce. Uh, so Mornay is a basic cheese sauce um, and we are going to uh, use Gruyere and Parmesan uh, for our Mornay sauce. So uh, I'm starting with uh, this bechamel. This bechamel is just past nappe. So I'm actually gonna start by just thinning this a little bit. Um, you may not need to thin your bechamel sauce. Your bechamel may be the right consistency, um, but it's nice to have that little bit of milk uh, on hand in case the sauce does uh, need to be thinned a little bit. So I've gone ahead and thinned that bechamel sauce and I have it just back over my heat just to keep it warm. Uh, it's okay to bring this sauce up to a simmer, but again, we don't wanna boil uh, this sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, whisk my cheese into my bechamel sauce. Okay. 
And I wanna go ahead and continue to whisk just until the cheese is melted. And then once my cheese is melted, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the stove, uh, from my heat source, and I'm going to add in my cold whole butter. Okay, so the cheese is uh, mostly melted into my bechamel sauce, and at this point, I'm gonna remove my sauce from my heat source. I'm going to add in my uh, whole butter. And I'm just gonna stir in this whole butter uh, until the butter is melted through the sauce. You'll also note that at no point uh, up until now have I added any uh, seasoning other than the nutmeg that was in the bechamel. Um, and the reason for that is that the, uh, the cheese is going to be quite salty. So whereas I may in the beginning stages of making a derivative sauce uh, add some salt, with bechamel I tend to wait until the end to season because I don't want to over season because of the saltiness of that cheese. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate for some seasoning. And I do need just a pinch of salt, not very much, just a little pinch and a small pinch of white pepper. When I'm making these white sauces, I tend to use white pepper so that we don't get the flecks of the black pepper throughout our sauce. Incorporate that seasoning in just one final taste here. Mm, and that bechamel sauce is perfect. The last thing I'm going to do is evaluate the consistency. Uh, this Mornay sauce um, is a little on the thicker side, um, which maybe if I was using this to make a macaroni and cheese would be exactly what I wanted. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this just on the thick side uh, of nappe. Okay, once again, I'm gonna strain my sauce through my chinois. Use my spatula. To push my sauce through my chinois, you can see as that's coming out how nice and velvety smooth that is. So I've gotten most of that Mornay sauce um, through the strainer. And as we evaluate the Mornay sauce, what's really important to look at is how nice and smooth this sauce is. You can see that there's no unmelted strings of cheese or clumps of flour. This sauce is so nice and smooth. Um, few reasons. Uh, first was our good heat management. We didn't boil the sauce to curdle the milk. Um, we didn't add too high heat as we were adding the cheese, right? We kept that sauce at that nice uh, simmer uh, temperature. Uh, and then also, uh, we strained that sauce through a chinois twice, once when we finished making the bechamel, uh, and then again when we finished making the Mornay to ensure that really nice, smooth sauce. So let's review. When adding a cold liquid to a hot roux, begin by removing the roux from the heat source, allowing it to cool momentarily, and then adding the cold liquid, whisking vigorously to ensure that the starches in the flour don't gelatinize and form lumps. Next, never boil a milk-based sauce. They'll scorch to the bottom of the pan, only simmer. Finally, when working with milk-based sauces and soups, be sure to use a rubber spatula and scrape the entire bottom and sides of the pan and stir the sauces regularly. Right